Once again, we're at the last Tuesday of the month. It feels like August has absolutely flown by, and last month, we started getting some of those 2025 leaks and rumors around not only LEGO Star Wars sets, but today we have a lot of other themes in that as well. But starting off, we have a big leak only a few hours ago, as of recording this, at least from Star Wars and Batman. Star Wars first, arguably the more important of the two, I'll let you debate that down in the comments, has a set for January that hasn't previously been rumoured, set 75406, and that is meant to be a MIDI Scout ship, but it's all written in Polish and Reddit has allegedly translated this. I know I have a big Polish audience, so it'd be great if one of you could let me know what it actually says down in the comments, but allegedly this Star Wars MIDI Scout ship is currently unknown on what ship it is a MIDI Scout of, but it's set to release on the 1st of January 2024 as a LEGO store and LEGO shop at home exclusive, and also is meant to be the third of its kind. And this is what really confuses me. Now, I'm not taking Reddit's translation as gospel. I'm pretty sure they've just picked out certain words and tried to piece the puzzle together. Because if you've been a fan of LEGO Star Wars, you probably know that there isn't three MIDI scout ships. There has been, there was an old promo of a Nebulum B frigate. And then last year, 2023, we got the Super Star Destroyer. And this year alone, we've got three MIDI scout ships. So it can't be the third one. This year, by the way, we got the Falcon, the Tantive, and the Invisible Hand. So that's five MIDI scale Star Wars ships. Perhaps they meant it's the third wave, but we've got the Nebulon, we've got the Star Destroyer, and then we've got the three this year, so it can't be that. I don't really know what the third and final MIDI scale ship is meant to mean, because the Nebulon, we've got the Star Destroyer, we've got the Falcon, and we've got the Tantive are all original trilogy sets, so it can't be that. Perhaps it's a third prequel MIDI scale ship, but again, we've only got the invisible hand, so we'd need another one rumoured. It is so confusing. Definitely head to the comments to find out what this actually means. And the other leak that we've recently got is of the Batman Batmobile. Though I'm not too well versed on the different eras of Batman, this is instantly recognisable as the Batmobile from the classic TV show. The black one with the red trim, and I really like the cockpit on the Lego model. I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you many, if any, of the images in this video. So I'll have them all up in as high definition as I can over on the channel Discord. So if you would like to become a member, consider doing it right now so you can follow along as we go through the video. I'll try and keep these ordered as I talk about them just so it's easier for you to find. But the Batmobile seems to have all the iconic details, the bat on the side of the car, including the bats on the wheels as well, and does look like a really, really cool model. It's a massive model. It's similar to some of the smaller UCS Star Wars ships like the A-Wing or the Land Speeder. So it's definitely going to be around a similar price mark. And it's meant to be coming out October the 1st, 2024, which is an amazing segue into the next segment of the video, the Jabba Sal Barge. We're meant to be getting a UCS Jabba Sal Barge and it's all but confirmed from LEGO at this point. If you haven't seen already, we've got images of Salacious B. Crumb, who is at the time of recording this video again, the only confirmed minifigure, though I'm sure, knowing the history of my rumours and releases here on the channel, they've probably officially announced it last night and it's gone out before the video has even hit YouTube. But if that is the case, I'll pin a comment saying anything that has changed or been updated or officially released on lego.com. As of right now, Salacious B. Crumb is the only piece of the salvage that we've even seen images of. And yes, that could very well be a custom creator that has made that based on the last one, added the brand new yellow eyes. If you haven't seen images, it does have similar eyes to Maul, to Ahsoka, to Ezra. With the new eyes that Lego are trialing, personally, I am quite a big fan of them. I do like that as a Lego style, but they've got to choose whether they're doing it on Force users or whether they're doing it on all minifigures, whether they're just doing it on aliens, because we've got Ezra, who's a Force user and humanoid. We've got Hera, who's an alien and not a Force user. Well, at least not that Star Wars have confirmed in any books so far, because I think Jason is meant to be full sensitive and that was confirmed in one of the books or comics. But don't hold me to that because that could all change next time we see him on screen. And we've also got images of the box it's supposedly meant to be packed in. Not the exterior box, it hasn't given away any details, 
but the interior box, and I think there was a photo of Max Rebo on the side, which would be cool to get a special mold. Now that we know that the arms are actually his legs and he plays with his feet and doesn't fit the normal shape of a Lego minifigure, it'd be cool to get. Even reuse a baby mold or something like that over from Lego City or the Simpsons one that I've mentioned before would work great with Yoda for Max Rebo because I think it just works so well. But I am hoping we get some images on that. And again, as soon as the images are here, I will whack them up on Discord and still keep these videos monthly because I enjoy speculating on future Star Wars sets. But if I was to make a video every time they posted it, which I did try to do, I think around May time, I just end up posting two videos a day and can't get any other content out. And that's not fun for anyone. As far as the other characters in the Sal Barge, I'm going to do a bit of speculating here, which most of the time I'm talking in these videos is actually just my own thoughts and opinions as opposed to leaks that some other account has come out with. Because if you do want to know about that, you can just follow them instead of following me. But I don't see the Sal Barge coming with too many minifigures. And I know everyone's speculating it's going to come with 5, 10, 15 minifigures. I think even having as many as 5 is... Pushing it a little bit too much. It's Jabba's Sal Barge, so Jabba and Salacious B. Crumb are a given. And it would be really cool to get a character like Max Rebo and some of the other Skiff Guards that they didn't put in their recent set, which I think they are going to do. The Desert Skiff and Sarlacc set that they just released is a horrendous set, mainly because of the minifigures used. They reused Boba, they've got a wrong Han, Luke, a slightly mismatched Lando though, Lando does look pretty cool. I'm not going to go in on that too much. And of course, Chewie is one of those minifigures like Mando, like Vader, and so many others that we just get in so many sets. If you don't own a Chewie by now and really want to own one, you're best buying them on Bricklink. The price is so low because of how common that minifigure is. But I could definitely see them adding a Nikto or Klaatu minifigure in the Sal Barge to make people want to buy that to make the Desert Skiff and Sarlacc work because that Sarlacc has definitely been beefed up for a display model compared to the regular one that's just a few pieces and works well as a play feature. That has been built to look good on shelves next to something like Jabba's Salvage. And I'll admit, I don't think the new Skiff does actually look that good on display, but there are a few funny features with it that make it more poseable for display as opposed to fun play features so it's definitely a display model and it looks like it's been made to go with Jabba's Salvage. Something that won't be being made again by Lego is classic Boba Fett and if you have been on any Star Wars forums recently or even looked as far as my comment section so many people have been getting excited for this classic Boba Fett which was used in an old I believe it was a Polish magazine. So if you're a fan of Lego Star Wars in Poland, you seem to be getting all the news. So hopefully you're not struggling too much to keep up with it. But that is why I'm making the video here. Anyway, the magazine has come out since and it wasn't Boba Fett. I do believe it might have even been Sabine that came in that magazine. I can't remember because Europe's slightly out of sync with the UK. At one point we were in sync with Germany and then they missed a minifigure and went ahead again. So I'm beginning to think that one of these future magazines will not be who I expect because we'll have skipped a magazine just to catch up with Europe. But really, there is no getting into that. That is a whole video in itself. And when that magazine, the date was on screen, I'll try and find a screenshot. There's been so many posted did come out. Classic Boba was not in the magazine. It was just an art they used at the back of the magazine, which I agree is a bit weird. Normally next to the date you have next month's minifigure. And I say minifigure rather than build because recently we've just got a whole row of minifigures. I think we're about eight, nine months into the year. We've got the next few months of magazines all but confirmed thanks to Europe being ahead. And we have got two builds this year if I'm not mistaken, but you can pick up the May 4th promo in a mag in the UK. Again, check out my magazine video if you want more info on that. It would be really nice to see the magazine release some classic or some of the older minifigures. Not too rare of minifigures because, well, that would just absolutely crash any investor's motivation for buying Lego sets in the first place if a few years down the line they're going to be able to pick it up for a fiver with a magazine. But to redo some minifigures, even like the anniversary minifigures, we've seen five years ago, we got Luke, Leia, Kenobi, another Luke, Vader, Han, and Lando. And we've also got more recently. They could definitely do something like that for the anniversary, have perhaps 
three, four minifigures throughout the year with that anniversary printing on the back, exclusive to a magazine. And for people that are outside of Europe or are in countries that don't get the magazine, not only would you be able to buy the magazines, hopefully off someone like me, I'm still trying to add the Sabine and 212 magazines to Bricklink, it's taken forever, but don't worry, the magazines will be up hopefully by the end of the year at this rate. But America also get their own exclusive poly bags and I'd love to see that distributed to other countries that don't get the magazine. Something like we saw with Kenobi five years ago that was exclusive to that poly bag that I think was given away for May 4th. So I guess this is a substitute for those May 4th minifigures of old, which again, still love to see them return. They sort of did something like that with Beru Lars for the land speeder. Again, Owen definitely needs to be included in that set, but he was included, I think, alongside Baru a few years back. So that minifigure did exist and still holds up roughly to some minifigures today. As well as Boba Fett, there has been a division with the Ahsoka Eater Starfighter. As I said, these videos, for the most part, aren't my speculation. So I am still hoping that we get Plo's Delta rather than Ahsoka's Eater, because even though we've just received Kenobi's Delta, and we actually got Jedi Bob's Delta as well, though it was a modified Delta, still based off the Delta, it's about time we get another Eater. With Revenge of the Sith, it would be nice to get an Anakin Kenobi 2-pack, but we got Anakin probably about six years ago. So perhaps they are mistaken Ahsoka's Eater for Kenobi's from Revenge of the Sith, but I'd still love to see a Plo Koon Delta, especially if we get some Wolfpack or some of the green troopers that he fights alongside in Revenge of the Sith, though not seen on screen. As well as these Star Wars sets, I'd like to quickly go over a few other sets that have been leaked, teased, or otherwise around LEGO. First off, LEGO released a Brick Toons trailer for a series of shorts they're doing around Pixar shows, and it included this scene of the Pixar lamp. And whilst that might just look like the Lego-fied version of the Pixar little short at the start of all the movies with a lamp jumping on the eye, and I like how the eye explodes into a load of tiny Lego bricks. That's a really nice touch. Well, over on Lego Ideas, which I've sort of distanced recently. I don't really build anything on there, but I still like having a scroll time to time. They announced two recent idea sets that would be turned into Lego, one of which was a little city picturesque scene, I believe, and the other was a Willy Wonka set. So hopefully we can see images of that in the next couple of years. Normally it's about a year or two they spend working on it, but they also mentioned that they were working on a deal with Disney to make the Pixar lamp as sort of a honorary third place into a Lego set, but that had not been confirmed at the time of that video. I'll try and find the clip of them saying it, and now with this trailer, we not only see a brick built Pixar lamp, but we could possibly get a set to go along with it, promote the shorts. I believe they are airing on Disney Plus, which is where all the other Lego shorts are. We've got all the various Star Wars ones. We've got Avengers Code Red as well, which I did break down on this channel. That was a while ago. So perhaps I can do a similar thing for the future Star Wars shorts. And on top of this, again, Pictures are up on the Discord if you want to look, and I'm sure there are various other places you can find them if you don't want to become a member. We've got Animal Crossing 2025 sets, which do look really cool. There is a poly bag of Blather's sister, which would, you would think, use the same head mold as Blather's. So perhaps they're building up to a Blather's museum for the summer of next year, which me and my fiance are really excited for. She does have a few of the sets and they all look really cool. I'm really liking the exclusive head molds for most of the animals. And we've also got our first look at the Mario Kart 2025 sets. First off, they're not minifigure based. They are around the same buildable characters that you have with the interactive game, which is a little disappointing. I would have hoped to seen minifigure size Mario Karts. We have done a mock here before on the channel, but the carts don't actually look too big to get around using actual minifigures with it. You can buy custom Mario minifigures pretty much any way you can buy other licensed custom minifigures at this point, excluding some Star Wars specific, like the big clone customs, which just do clones. But you could definitely get some custom Mario minifigures to use with the Mario Karts because the items almost minifigure scale. The question mark blocks seem as big as you when you're driving on Mario and that holds up to a nice two by two, which this is the more recent design of the Mario Kart question mark block. I've seen so many reviews of people saying 
They don't know where they've got the trans blue color from and it looks nothing like question mark blocks. After playing a fair bit of Mario Kart 8, the most recent one recently, they look so much like the question mark blocks from there. So you can sort of tell who does play Mario Kart and who hasn't played it for a bit. You've also got some items like the banana that's been given a face print, which if you didn't know, at the start of the year, we did get a banana mold. So it was building up to that real nicely. We also get different molds for the red and green shells. I assumed they were just gonna use the same pieces that they use on the back of Yoshi minifigures and like the Koopa Trooper minifigures and all that. But they've actually given us unique molds that fit in a stud launcher. So I definitely will be picking up the Yoshi bike. Again, images are up on the Discord. So come next year, there will be a review here on the channel of it. And I will also be looking at how easy it is to modify it for minifigures to work with them. We've also got another Lego flower. And again, there's gonna be a load more sets trickling out. It's only the end of August and we're already getting leaks for next year. As I said with Blathers Museum, we're already speculating on sets for next summer. We're looking 10 months away already, but we're just really excited about what LEGO will be coming. They have revealed a few sets recently. We've got the Nightmare Before Christmas set, which I can show you. I can put these up on screen, such as the Nightmare Before Christmas set, which looks really, really cool. And it's actually decently priced, which is really, really nice because I really hope to pick this up at some point. We've got the Burrow from Harry Potter as well, which is a UCS styled set. It's nice to see a slightly cheaper one than the Hogwarts or the Giant Owl on the books. It's a bit pricey for what it is. I would have preferred to get a playset of this, but at the end of the day, it's not me that are buying these. So Lego have definitely aimed this at more of a collector. Hopefully we can get a playset burrow when this one retires. We've also got a line of Wicked sets as well from the Dolls range, though I will say there is a set where similar to the Harry and Hermione, the Lego giant and my Captain Rex just behind me, they've built giant mini dolls for this, which was really, really interesting to see. And of that set, I really like the Oz in the background. And we've also got some Christmas and Halloween sets. Again, I'll flash them up on screen. Nothing too special, but they look like really, really fun sets. So I'm excited to see what the rest of the year has. Of course, we are still waiting on the Jabba Sail Barge. Hopefully this time next month, I'll have images so we can go over and look at it. If it's anything special, I might do its own video. But again, I like keeping them to the end of the month. So a bit of speculation in there. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments and let me know what you're excited for for the January wave. Again, I'd love to see some Revenge of the Sith sets. It's been 10 years since The Force Awakens hit cinemas. I'd love to see at least one Force Awakens set. That's all I'm asking from LEGO. Perhaps even a promotion around May 4th. They usually do three, four promotions. We can have one Revenge of the Sith, we can have one Empire Strikes Back, and one Force Awakens. Of course, Force Awakens would probably be at the cheaper end, Revenge of the Sith would be the middle one, and Empire Strikes Back. They're whacking at that higher price threshold because they know original trilogy sets sell the best out of the lot. And I do think that Empire Strikes Back does hold its own against Revenge of the Sith when it comes to fan opinion. And so many prequel fans love the originals anyway. So you're just stacking up on them promos and giving sequel fans something because we've got Darth Ray this year. We've still got the Rise of Skywalker Falcon, which is set to retire at the end of the year. So next year, all they're gonna have is Darth Ray. And I definitely think there should be one set a year dedicated to the sequels, especially for general Lego fans as well, that only have a handful of sequel trilogy minifigures. I have custom built quite a few of them now at this point with the duplicates, but I would like to get at least one sequel set a year. So hopefully Lego can change that soon. And thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Check out all the videos on screen and now that YouTube thinks you will enjoy it. May the bricks be with you always.